Good afternoon, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. We want to welcome you to today's Utah Healthy Places Index launch webinar. My name is Heather Borski, and I serve as an assistant deputy director in the Department of Health and Human Services. We are really excited to have you here today to learn more about the Utah Healthy Places Index. The index is really important to the Department of Health and Human Services. Our agency vision is that we will advocate for, support, and serve all individuals and communities in Utah. We will ensure all Utahns have fair and equitable opportunities to live safe and healthy lives. We will achieve this through effective policy and a seamless system of services and programs. The index serves to support this agency vision. The Utah Healthy Places Index is a comprehensive tool for local health departments, local communities, city leaders, researchers, nonprofit organizations, and others to explore community conditions related to the social determinants of health and helps in measuring and mapping health equity. The index provides data and policy recommendations to compare health and well being of communities at the neighborhood level quantify the factors that shape health, and turn data into actionable solutions. Today's webinar results from a development process that took well over a year and included people from several Department of Health and Human Services offices and divisions and a wide range of stakeholders. We as an agency are very excited to see this tool launch today and hope you enjoy today's webinar. And I will turn the time over to Sarah Hodson. Thank you, Heather. Um, we appreciate your support, Heather, and the support of DHHS leadership. Um, I'm Sarah Hudson. I'm the Deputy Director for the Office of Health Promotion and Prevention at the Utah Department of Health and Human Services. We're excited to have you here today to learn more about the Utah Healthy Places Index. A little over a year ago, the Office of Health Promotion and Prevention contracted with the Public Health Alliance of Southern California to create the Utah Healthy Places Index, which is modeled after the California Healthy Places Index. I wanna start by acknowledging the teams that have been working on this project. First, the DHHS HPI mapping team has been leading this work. This has been a coordinated effort where we've relied heavily on the various skills and strengths of our team members this has been a lot of work, as I'm sure you can imagine, so a huge thank you to this internal team. Funding for this project comes from the Violence and Injury Prevention Program and the Overdose Data to Action Cooperative Agreement funded by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. I also want to acknowledge the development team from the Public Health Alliance of Southern California. I'm pleased that we have Helen Dowling here with us from the Alliance, and she'll present to you later today. We meet with Helen and her team regularly, and they have been excellent partners throughout this process. We're gonna start the webinar today with a poll. Um, so Melanie is going to launch that poll. So please just take a minute to answer. What type of organization do you work in? So state government, local government, healthcare, community-based organization, academia, other. We'll give a few more seconds here to get responses. Okay, Melanie, do you wanna share the results? Great, so it looks like we have a, a big chunk of participants from state government. I know across multiple agencies, um, some of our local government partners and a good mix of healthcare, community, academia, and others. So we're just pleased to have all of you here with us today to learn more about the Healthy Places Index. Um, today, I'm gonna to provide a brief introduction into the Utah HPI. And then Helen will give you a demonstration of the tool. We'll also hear from three of our community partners who were involved in the development, and then we'll have some time for Q&A. I wanna just mention a few items of housekeeping. Um, first, the me this meeting is being recorded. All participants will receive a follow-up email with the recording that you're welcome to share with colleagues, partners, and others who may be interested in learning more about the HPI. Uh, participants will be muted throughout the webinar and the chat feature has been disabled. To submit a question for the Q&A, you can select the Q&A icon in your bottom toolbar and you can submit questions at any time, but we'll answer those during the Q&A portion at the end of the webinar. 
So why did the Office of Health Promotion and Prevention decide to work with the Alliance to create the Utah Healthy Place Center? Well, in recent years, the Department of Health and Human Services has increasingly focused on social determinants of health and the role that they play in health outcomes. We know that where we live impacts our health. For example, in Utah, life expectancy at birth varies across the state, as you can see illustrated here for all of Utah on the left and for two communities in Salt Lake City on the right. Downtown Salt Lake, where life expectancy is 75.3 years, and the East Bench where life expectancy is 83.5 years. That's more than an eight year difference in life expectancy in two communities that neighbor each other. Disparities in the conditions and communities where we grow, live, work, and age impact our health and our well being. Communities with available employment and adequate tax bases can support high quality schools. Affordable and safe housing means that residents are not exposed to overcrowding, allergens, or other hazards. Communities with healthy food options and available fresh produce support the nutritious needs of the community members. Neighborhoods with safe walking and biking, access to parks and trails support physical activity. Communities with adequate public transportation um, allow for people to have access to healthcare, jobs, childcare, and social services. Social cohesion and connections within neighborhoods can promote social well being. These are the types of neighborhoods and communities that we all want for ourselves, for our families, and for all Utahns. However, we know that social conditions can vary drastically by neighborhood. It's often the result of systemic problems and policy decisions that leads to inequities and health disparities. It's the vision of DHHS that we ensure all Utahns have fair and equitable opportunities to live safe and healthy lives. And in order to do that, we must understand and address community conditions. The Office of Health Equity here at the Utah Department of Health and Human Services has created a health equity framework that illustrates the role of social determinants of health and structural or systems-based determinants, as you can see on the bottom row here. If you move up the framework, it highlights the importance of having the opportunity to thrive in healthy community conditions and to do that so that we can have healthy, productive, and empowered communities and individuals. It was the understanding of the importance of community conditions and our vision of fair and equitable opportunities for all Utahns that led us to the, explore the idea of creating a mapping tool to support this work. We were drawn to four specific strengths of the HPI. First is the granularity of the data. Data are available at multiple levels, including Utah small area and census tract. This neighborhood level focus is important for identifying individual communities that can benefit most from resources. Second, the index is statistically validated with an important outcome, life expectancy at birth. Third, each indicator is supported by a wealth of policy opportunities, which provides communities with evidence-based solutions to improve community conditions. And finally, the positive framework, as the name implies, it's the Healthy Places Index, which speaks to community assets and refers extensively to the healthy community conditions and opportunities when neighborhoods may be falling short. The Utah HPI is a tool that helps us explore community conditions and, and compare the health and well being of communities at the neighborhood level. It quantifies the factors that shape health and advances health equity through open and accessible data with actionable solutions. Once we decided to work with the Alliance to create the Utah HPI, we began meeting with a variety of partners, both internal and external to the Department of Health and Human Services to create a specific tool with indicators and policies geared toward Utah communities. We held stakeholder engagement meetings with nearly 100 people from a variety of agencies and organizations and we relied on these partners to provide input and expertise during the process of identifying indicators and policies that would go into the Utah HPI and then helping us to beta test the tool over the summer. This extensive partnership engagement process was important for creating a tool that would be relevant across the state and would benefit the health of all Utahns. You'll get a more in-depth understanding of the tool when Helen demonstrates some of its features in just a minute, but first, just a basic introduction. The Utah HPI elevates the relationship between 20 key drivers of health and life expectancy at birth. Those measures fall into eight action areas, education, transportation, housing, 
social, clean environment, neighborhood, healthcare access, and economic. The HPI is a composite score from 1 to 99 that shows the relative impact of community conditions in a selected area to all other such places in the state. The indicators that make up this score were selected based on literature review, data availability, actionability, and their association with life expectancy, which is a process that was developed by the Public Health Alliance. In addition to the indicators that make up the HPI score, the map has nearly 350 other indicators, including categories of race and ethnicity, called decision support. A few of those are listed here. These indicators provide additional context and information to communities, and 30 of these indicators were selected with input from Utah stakeholders. As I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons we decided to create the Utah Healthy Places Index is because of its extensive policy guides which are tied to the indicators of the HPI score and make it an actionable tool. This supports a public health approach of addressing policy, systems, and environmental change to make healthy choices practical and available to all community members and to impact the systems and structures in the community in order to have sustainable and long-lasting change. Communities can explore over 300 evidence-based policy opportunities organized by the policy action areas and then determine for themselves which opportunities work best in their community. The Utah HPI is a free and easy to use data and policy platform available for anyone to use. State and local leaders can use the HPI alongside input from community residents to provide uh, information on prioritizing investments, resources, and programming in areas where health needs are greatest, ensuring that all residents have what they need to be healthy. Transportation agencies can use the HPI to inform smart investments and promote infrastructure such as walking and biking. Regional organizations that span multiple communities may use the tool to study the different areas they serve and advocate for increased resources and greater investments in the areas that need it most. School districts could use the tool to understand the needs of their student body and the communities they serve or to develop policies such as safe routes to school plans and lots of other uses as well. Now, Helen Dowling from the Public Health Alliance is going to provide a demonstration of the Utah HPI. Helen? Thank you, Sarah, and hello, everyone. My name is Helen Dowling. I use she and her pronouns, and I'm the Director of Data Initiatives at the Public Health Alliance of Southern California. As Sarah noted, my team at the Public Health Alliance co-developed the Utah HPI. Over the last year, it's been a privilege and a pleasure to work closely with the incredible people who comprise the DHHS mapping team. I'm delighted to be here with them today to celebrate the launch of the Utah Healthy Places Index. And I'm excited to share some of the features we're bringing you with our online, interactive, and completely free to use Utah HPI map tool. To start, I wanna give a brief overview of the kinds of activities our HPI data and map tools support. With them, you can access information about your communities, including HPI score and indicators and detailed race and ethnicity measures, including subpopulations and ancestry data. Access hundreds of decision support layers, including health outcomes, demographic data, neighborhood assets, and measures disaggregated by race and ethnicity or language. Generate HPI ranks within your city, county, and more to answer the question, for example, of how the communities in your county stack up. Create custom geographies to aggregate data for communities of interest. Assess how measures vary by race and ethnicity and explore the race and ethnic demographics of communities you live and work in. Compare data across geographies and by race ethnicity. This gives you the opportunity to examine equity impacts across race and place. Receive policy recommendations tailored to the specific needs of your community, supporting moving neighborhood data into action. Filter geographies by race, ethnicity, and ancestry to identify small or geographically dispersed populations. And view historically redlined neighborhoods, a policy in effect from 1935 to 1940 that has had long lasting impacts on communities across the country. Let's talk more about some of these features using a few hypothetical scenarios. Up first, let's say the Sugar House Community Council is developing a neighborhood profile. 
they want to highlight neighborhood assets as well as discover opportunities for improvement. To support this work, the Council should use our community conditions function, which will allow them to see the HPI score of their neighborhood and investigate the individual HPI indicators within our policy action areas. I'll demonstrate how they might do that. To explore, just click a neighborhood on the map. With an HPI rank of 47.1, this means that this neighborhood, Sugar House, has healthier conditions than nearly half of the communities in the state. But that's not the whole story. You can click through each policy action area to reveal the HPI indicators. It's a great way to identify assets and opportunities. If you find an indicator of interest, simply click the arrow next to it, like we've done here for bachelor's education. Here, you'll find the definition as well as information about the data source and policy opportunities connected to this measure. Finally, going back to the community conditions panel and scrolling further, you can explore the demographic information for the census tract here under race and ethnicity. And importantly, we've built in three indicators of equity, including whether this tract was historically redlined. This overview of the Sugar House neighborhood through the lens of the HPI provides a great starting point for the community council's profile. Now, let's say a nonprofit serving Iron County is applying for a grant to expand their education work. The development manager wants to analyze third grade reading proficiency data to discuss educational outcomes in this region to include in their grant application. To support their work, this nonprofit should tap into our extensive decision support layers, nearly 350 in all. Let me show you. To access these layers, click the View Indicators function in the Tools menu. Up first, you can view individual HPI indicators organized by their policy action area. If you scroll down, you can access our many decision support layers organized by category. The Iron County nonprofit would head straight to our school and education category, which includes data on schooling students and proficiencies, including third grade math and reading uh, proficiency. Just click the button next to the indicator to load it onto the map. And if you want to learn more, click the arrow to see a definition and data source for this measure, which I'm showing on the screen now. Beyond school and education data, our decision support layers include measures of community conditions beyond the HPI, including food access and security, environmental exposures and neighborhood assets, equity, diversity and inclusion, population data covering languages spoken in linguistic isolation, along with demographic characteristics, population data on a variety of race ethnicities, tribal affiliations and ancestry groups, as well as many others. Next, I wanna talk about the critical importance of including race and ethnicity in your community analyses. One way to do this is to explore how health outcomes and community conditions vary by race and ethnicity. In addition to offering a deeper understanding of the factors at play in Utah communities, it can also support another level of resource or advocacy prioritization, like in the scenario described here. The Utah Housing Coalition is producing a fact sheet for community housing advocates in the greater Salt Lake City region on differences in home ownership rates by race and ethnicity. Let's go ahead and look at home ownership in the Salt Lake City and Provo areas. To get started, we'll open the tools menu and we'll click compare data. Then we'll select your indicator or indicators of interest. For indicator number one, I'm selecting home ownership in the housing area. And then we'll go up to the map by race and ethnicity drop down here and pick the white alone category. Now for indicator number two, I'm also selecting home ownership. But this time we'll pick the Hispanic or Latino category in the map by race and ethnicity drop down. You'll see both maps load side by side and they're linked together. As you hover over one, the mouse moves over the other to facilitate comparisons between the two. This really only took a few seconds of setup and we can easily see that home ownership is higher overall among non-Hispanic white persons compared to Hispanic or Latino persons. This is a powerful tool for investigating inequities and outcomes and community conditions across the state and is one of several ways the HPI tool allows you to include race and ethnicity in your analyses. The last feature I want to highlight are the Utah HPI policy guides, which Sarah touched on earlier. 
the extensive policy guides using an evidence-based rating system based on the CDC framework are one of the key components of the platform. We want people to be able to take the HPI data into action, and the policy guides are a great resource to do just that. In the scenario here, the manager of the Logan City Neighborhood Improvement Division is identifying policies to support increased transit access, including construction of new bike lanes to present before the city council. The manager can use our new built-in policy opportunities function to identify the best transit-oriented actions to take in their area. To access the full policy guide content, simply go to the tools menu and select policy opportunities. You'll see a list of all of our guides, which you can then click through to explore in greater depth, including reading about the connection to health, some quick start ideas, as well as individual policy actions I'm demonstrating here. Alternatively, if you select community first, so while we're looking at Logan here, and then click on policy opportunity in the tools menu, the map will automatically elevate policies that could have the greatest impact in this specific neighborhood. It's an excellent way for you and for the Logan City Manager to find ideas for action in your community. Before I wrap up, I wanna take a moment and share that our map is not the only place to view the policy guides. If the manager wanted to explore the guides in more detail, they would find the new policy guide website at policies.utah.healthyplacesindex.org, an accessible tool to dig deep into our policy opportunities. Showcasing the 27 guides in an easy to read searchable format, the new policy guides websites allow you to quickly access the evidence rating for each of the hundreds of policy actions we include in the guides, along with sample ordinances, links to relevant reports, strategies and plans, templates, resources, and more. Guides are available for every indicator in the HPI, along with seven of the decision support layers. And with that whirlwind tour, I've appreciated the opportunity to be here today to share what is very much a brief sampling of everything we've brought to the Utah HPI. We can't wait for you to try it out. The best way to learn more is to dive in and explore it yourself. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Sarah. Thank you, Helen. Um, I'm sure you're all now excited to have the opportunity to explore this really, really exciting new and innovative tool. Um, and that just gives you just a very, very brief sneak peek. Um, now we're pleased to be able to hear from three of our partners. As I mentioned, the development process included extensive stakeholder engagement, and these three partners were heavily involved throughout the development process, and I'm glad that they've agreed to be here today to share briefly about that involvement and then a little bit about how they anticipate using the tool in the future. So we'll start with Caitlin Schneider from the United Way of Salt Lake. And after Caitlin will be Isa Perry from Davis County Health Department and then Angelo Papastamas from Utah Department of Transportation. Caitlin. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to be here and um, for the rest of you to all see this, this launch of this tool, which I think is really incredible. So um, United Way of Salt Lake has been involved in the development of the Utah Healthy Places Index um, through stakeholder group participation and selecting um, some of the indicators and things that are included in the tool. Um, we also involved many, many of our staff in the policy guide review. Um, we work on specific things around education, um, employment, financial stability, housing, um, and also our, our policy and legislative experts on our team, um, and also submitting sort of examples and, and local uh, work that's being done in some of those areas that are included in the policy guide. Um, several of us on the team, including myself, also beta tested the tool, um, got to kind of have a first look at it and, you know, make some suggestions and improvements and bugs and things that we found along the way. Um, when I slide. Um, I think what we're really excited about uh, this tool for our work at United Way of Salt Lake um, is really, you know, our work is, is largely focused on convening um, and facilitating cross-sector networks um, with our Promise partners and our Promise communities and with our schools. And so really using this tool as a way to source um, different population indicators, to be able to look at all of that data, to compare demographic data and indicators within the same tool. Um, and I think, you know, one of the, the pieces too for us is we have access to other data that we can upload um, on our own and be able to, again, cross compare um, within our school districts or different communities that United Way of Salt Lake works in. Um, for us, as a, we're also a funder and 
So I think for us, this is a, a great tool to also look at um, in terms of our prioritization for different resources and funding that we might be providing out to communities or where we should target and focus our efforts. Um, it's also a great tool for grant writing um, to be able to, again, pull that data from different communities um, really in one source rather than going and looking for it in lots of different places. Um, and again, we, you know, we are an advocacy organization as well. And so this tool, I think, can really, especially those policy guides, help us generate and support different policy efforts um, based on the different indicators and uh, health challenges that we see in our communities and, and help us focus in and, and really be able to also show that to, to the, the mayors and the other uh, legislative and political leaders that we work with in our work. So really excited about this tool. Sarah, thank you so much for allowing us to be part of the process and for uh, sharing how we're really excited about using this with our team. So thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Isa Perry. I work at the Davis County Health Department, and I coordinate Davis for Health, our health improvement collaborative. Davis County was involved in the development of the Utah Healthy Places Index in several ways. Um, our epidemiologist is part of the SEED committee, so that's a group of epidemiologists that had an opportunity to weigh in along the process of development. And also our community health director, um, is part of ULAKES, which is the Association of Health Promotion Directors across all the local health departments, and they had opportunity to contribute to and share their ideas about what would be useful. Um, probably our biggest um, event and activity related to the development was participating in a Utah Healthy Places Index workshop, uh, which we also called an Equity Action Lab. We're really committed to addressing the root causes of health inequities and health disparities. And so this group, we got to bring together on August 9th with 50 community partners and staff to beta test the tool and see you know, what was easy to use about it and any of the bugs that were there and to think about how we would use it when it's available to the public. And so some of those partners that were involved included education, healthcare, we had city leaders, we had some community-based organizations and workforce services and other partners like that, as well as staff from throughout our department and the divisions and the different types of work settings um, and professionals that we have. Next slide. So um, we're excited for this to be available to the public and, the, and to us and our staff the way that we envision using it is we have really benefited from an area deprivation index, sort of that map to show areas of vulnerability. And um, we like this as an alternative or um, a companion to that. And it's more granular than the health improvement index, which has previously been available and didn't really show disparities in Davis County. It made us look like everyone's prosperous, everyone's doing well. We really need to get to the granular level to see um, what areas we need to focus on. Um, we are using this tool also to look for indicators that maybe we haven't found before and maps that can be included in our community health assessment. That's um, a five-year comprehensive report, um, but we are in a price process of continuous assessment too. So we use it for all the different topics that we look at, all the populations that we look at, and all the geographies that we look at. Um, after we complete our community health assessment, we move into picking priorities for our community health improvement plan, and then also developing an implementation plan. So we think that this tool will be helpful as our community talks through what priorities they think need to be in our plan. This um, health improvement index will help validate, you know, the data that we can put together with the community voice and the community context about how um, important that priority is. Um, also, we, um, I, like I mentioned, we're constantly doing um, health assessments based on topic or population. We really like the policy recommendations that are included in the tool because as part of those assessments where we gather all of the data and all of the resources, we also want to be able to provide some recommendations for things that will work for that population or that geography. Um, we hope to use it for targeted outreach, for immunizations, for WIC, also our health education programs. 
And then we have found in just our beta test and being able to have a little bit of access to the ver early versions of the tool that maybe some of the indicators in the Healthy Places Index show we have room for improvement like park access. But if we look at other um, scorecards, we see that park access is a strength of Davis County. So we just feel like we're gonna be able to cross check some of those data sources that might be contradictory. And then of course, hopefully we can use this in our grant writing as well. So thanks for the opportunity to share that. Hi, I'm Angela Papastamos with the Utah Department of Transportation, our planning division. Um, I'm very excited. Thanks for the opportunity, Sarah, to talk today and just to participate. I've been kind of working with Sarah since day one on this, and it's just so exciting to get to where we are. Uh, Utah, my team have provided input in every opportunity, basically past, present, and really the future as we move forward with this, both promoting, marketing, informing, and also further development of this as we go forward. So I'm so excited about what the future holds with this as we get into it. Next slide. Okay, so we uh, we plan on using the Utah HPI a lot. Um, and I'm gonna start with the end bullet in mind kind of. And, you know, we, we're looking for policy opportunities to improve the overall health of the community through really a better transportation network for all users. I loved your example of the Logan example that you introduced, Helen, thank you. Uh, but that's the kind of thing we're, we're gonna be able to do with this. Uh, for me, I've been trying to get health integrated into transportation programs and decision-making for a long time. And so I see us, really using those policy opportunities a, a lot. Uh, now, moving moving to the start, we want to start by informing people. We want to inform leaders, communities, you know, and really the strong ties of transportation network to the overall health of the community. So uh, I've played around with it a lot, the beta testing, the California site, and there's just so many opportunities that I see to help us. Um, one of the things that has allowed us to really move forward at Utah is we adopted this uh, quality of life uh, mission a while ago through a process called U-Vision. And so we're very much health and transportation and connected communities are linked. So I think the opportunity for us to use at Utah for, for really for helping us measure, for helping us be included in our, what we call our transportation project prioritization, I just think there's opportunities to really help the health of our community using this, using the HPI. Um, I run a program called TravelWise. Uh, people that work for me run another program called Move Utah. And we can use it right away to look at our programs, especially on the equity side of it, look at what, where are the inequities and look at vulnerable communities and really start looking at that transportation network. So I, I just visualize using this. Uh, I don't want to say starting tomorrow, but how about Monday? Thanks. Thank you. Um, thanks to Caitlin, Isa, and Angelo for taking the time to share that information with us today. I, I think you can see from, from their presentations why we value the partnership with these three agencies. And they were all so thoughtfully involved in the development process and really brought, as you can see, three different perspectives um, into that work to make sure we were working on a tool that would be beneficial to each of them. And as they talked about how they would use the tool, I heard over and over again, making data-driven decisions, having the policy piece, which is really important, um, and having it be something that can, can help support the work that they're already doing. So we're really excited to continue our partnership with, with uh, Caitlin, Isa, and Angelo and, and their agencies and thank them again for being here to share that information with us. Um, we're gonna launch a second poll so Melanie is going to do that. So the question is, now that you've gotten just a quick sneak peek and heard from our partners, um, 
how would you envision using the Utah HPI? And I believe you have uh, multiple, you can check multiple boxes here. So if there's more than one way, please click the different boxes. The options are understand community conditions where I live and work, steer funding and resources to places that need it most, inform policy approach, support grant opportunities or grant applications, identify best practices or other. So we'll give you just a few more seconds to let everyone have a chance to fill out the poll. Okay, let's share that. Can we share it, Melanie? Okay. Well, it looks like there uh, is planned engagement in all of the areas, which is fantastic because that is the purpose of this tool that you can use it in so many different ways. And we hope that you'll see ways to, to implement all of these different um, features and functions of the tool. So thanks for sharing that with us. Okay, we now have time for Q&A and we will have, I don't know, 10, 12 minutes for Q&A. I know people have been submitting things in the Q&A bar already. If you have a question, please submit it in the Q&A box at the bottom of your toolbar. Um, just as a reminder, the chat function is disabled and participants are muted. So the way to submit a question is through that Q&A function. Um, we've got a great team on the back end who are organizing those questions for us. Um, Melanie Beagley is here from the Office of Health Promotion and Prevention at the Department of Health and Human Services, and she's going to moderate the questions for us. So Melanie, I'll turn it to you. Yeah, well, our first question is, um, when can the public access this tool? Well, great news, it is available now. So we're gonna have um, one of our team members put the link in the chat to the website. You can access the Utah Healthy Places Index at um, a DHHS website that will be put in the chat for everyone to use. So it's available now. Great. Next, we have a question um, about the decision-making process that went into identifying the indicators for the Utah HPI. So if you could describe that decision-making process. Yeah, I can start with the process we went through and then maybe Helen, you could add some um, clarification on the criteria uh, and, and maybe even kind of the where we started as a base map using the California uh, decision support layers. So as I mentioned, we had an extensive partnership engagement process and that started really, I believe in around January around the indicator process. And we pulled together stakeholder groups around the different policy action areas that we mentioned earlier. So we had groups meeting on housing, on transportation, on food security, on education, and talking about what indicators would we want to add to the tool um, that would be important for Utah communities and our partners here to use as additional information to support the HPI indicators. And so we met with those groups and talked about different possibilities. And then we went through a prioritization and, and voting process to determine which we would include. We, we could include 30. And so we had to prioritize um, between all of those groups, which ones would be important to include. And, and some of the criteria were that they needed to be available uh, by the date we needed them. So it wasn't, a, it's not a situation where we could collect new data, it needs to be data that was already publicly available and that met a few other criteria that I can, that Helen can explain a little bit more. So we went through an extensive process to determine which indicators would be included. Um, and so I'm sure once you start exploring, there'll be some indicators that you may think, oh, what, why isn't this there? Why wasn't this included? Um, we also hope to, over time, add indicators to the map. And so we may do similar process again at some point where we pull stakeholders together and decide what are some additional indicators that would be useful to include. So Helen, anything to add? Yeah, I wanna take a second and do a little bit of disambiguation. We have basically two sets of indicators. So we have our 20 HPI indicators that contribute to the overall HPI score. And the selection for those indicators, we started with the base of using the California HPI indicators to maintain continuity with that Healthy Places Index. But we wanted to ensure that those data were available in Utah 
And in addition to availability in Utah, there were a couple of other really important factors that influenced whether we had these indicators um, as part of the overall HPI score. The first of which was linkage to life expectancy at birth. We needed to ensure that these indicators were correlated with life expectancy in the expected direction, which is to say for an indicator like above poverty, for example, we would expect as, po as, as there are fewer people in poverty, we would see a higher life expectancy. So all of the uh, candidate indicators were screened against life expectancy. So that was part one. And then part two that was very important was policy actionability. We wanted to make sure that the indicators that were included in the overall HPI score had clear policy opportunities associated with them. We wanted to make sure that all of the data that you see in the HPI can be acted upon. Now, for indicators that might not meet our HPI screening criteria um, or uh, didn't uh, weren't measures of community conditions, which is another criteria, it had to be a social determinant of health. So things like health outcomes weren't eligible to be included in the overall HPI score. Those were funneled into our decision support layers, and Sarah did, I think, a great job at identifying how we decided which indicators to include there. Great, thank you. Um, next, we have a question about the policy action guides. So how were the policy guides adapted for Utah and how did you decide on the policies included in the Utah HPI? So we went through a similar process that we uh, went for the indicators. So uh, early this spring, we took the California policy action guides, which were sort of our starting point, and we again met with uh, different stakeholder groups related to the different topic areas and went through a process of reviewing the policies that were there and reviewing the text to make sure it was Utah specific so that we had Utah specific examples and Utah specific resources and references, funding opportunities, all of those additional things um, that would be important to people in Utah communities to use that. Uh, Additionally, we had the opportunity to include 20 uh, Utah identified policies that we wanted added to the policy guides. And so again, we met with stakeholders and went through a process of deciding what would be good to add, where were there gaps maybe, where were there some um, opportunities where we saw alignment across the state or some momentum across the state. And we worked with partners to uh, decide on those 20 and add those to the policy guide. So it really was a very collaborative and very intense process to take what we started with and, and have what we are um, launching today, which are very Utah specific policy guides. Next, we have a question about how to learn more um, about how to use the Utah HPI map um, tool, where those resources may exist and, and if they do exist. Yes, so if you visit the uh, Utah HPI website, which I believe is in the chat, um, if not, we'll put it in again. And on the landing page, there are uh, links to a number of different tips and resources and tools that are available for you to use today. So there's tip sheets, there's an extensive frequently asked questions section, and then coming soon, there will be some training videos. So you can watch little videos on each of the features and functions of the map and be able to learn more there. There's also a contact us form if you have questions or issues that you have concerns with where you can reach out to us. And then we also link to the California HPI Knowledge Vault. And within the California HPI Knowledge Vault, there's an additional wealth of resources that may be beneficial for people to access as well. Great. Um, so we've had a few questions about, um, I know we've talked about potentially new indicators being updated um, and just general updates to the HPI. Um, and a few questions relate to not only will there be opportunities to add more data, but also will we be able to view data over time as those updates occur? So yes, one of the features of the California HPI that obviously doesn't um, exist in our map currently because this is the launch today, but is uh, the ability to compare data over time. And so as we do updates, 
um, that will be a feature that we will have available as well where you can compare that over time. And I think that will be a really valuable feature for people to use. Um, yes, we do plan to do updates periodically. And yes, those may include adding additional indicators with um, recommendations from partners and stakeholders. So again, as you get into the tool and navigate and start using it, we would love to hear feedback on how it's being used um, what the benefit has been, and then where are places where you see gaps and what we need to address. Um, Helen, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. No, I think just to, to echo that, I think we see certainly in California um, as well here in Utah, I we see the HPI as a living resource. It's not just something that we're putting out into the world one time and leaving it be, and your feedback um, is incredibly helpful for us to develop a tool and data sets that are important to your work. So we want to be able to continue building onto the Utah HPI, adding new data, adding new indicators, adding new years of indicators, and please get in touch with the data that you would find most helpful. If there's something that's not there that you could use in your work, we could always explore adding more. We've had several attendees ask about the ability to download this data. Um, and if it is possible to download, what type of files can be downloaded from it? Yes, so absolutely, you are welcome to download our data in a number of different formats. So through the mapping tool, you can sign up for our API, our HPI API. Um, you don't have to be a tech whiz to use it. We have a self-documentation page that will walk you through the steps in creating a link to download a file of any of the indicators that we include in the HPI, including the overall HPI score, any of the decision support layers, and at any geography that we make available on the map. This is an incredible resource for you to download the data and use it in your own work and in your own analyses outside of the HPI mapping application. You can download the data as either a data table, so a CSV format. You're also welcome to download those data as a GeoJSON if you want to import it into your own mapping applications as well. So lots of different uh, formats are available and they're available for every indicator that we make available through the HPI. Great. Um, there have been questions about, now we realize that there are resources that we can access um, that we asked about before on how, it, how to learn how to use the Utah HPI map for yourself, but is there an opportunity to get specific training or consultation, maybe one-on-one -on -one or with teams um, for people who want to maybe explore more advanced features? Yes. So um, on a on one of the slides that we'll put up in just a minute, there'll be an email address you can reach out to, which is ohpp at utah.gov. If you have additional questions um, after you spend some time exploring the map and the website, if there's additional questions or resources that you need, or if you're interested in having a presentation to a group or a coalition or staff meeting or something like that, and need some additional resources and training, please reach out via that email. There's also, as I mentioned, a contact us link on the website. Um, where you can, again, submit your information and request training and consultation or just get some questions answered if you have some questions that you need answered. So yes, please reach out. Um, we understand that what we shared with you today was a very fast and very brief overview of what is a very complex and uh, exciting tool. And so it will take more than the few minutes we spent together today to have a really good understanding of it. So yes, please reach out. And then we have a question about any recommendations you would provide for people on how to um, keep from misusing the tool. Helen, do you have thoughts on that? Misusing the tool is, that's, I'm not quite sure the parameters of, of misuse that we're referring to here. Here's what I will say. The data that we make available through the Healthy Places Index all comes from publicly accessible data sources. That is to say that the HPI brings all of our data together in one place, but there is nothing proprietary about individual indicators, for example. 
This is to say that if there are folks who are interested in misusing these data, if they're motivated enough to do so, the HPI hasn't suddenly made those data available. They exist elsewhere through other open data portals and through national data sources or state-based data sources. So I think in terms of it's the same, it's the same level of risk for misuse as there are for any other publicly accessible data sources. I guess I would just add two, and maybe this isn't what the, the questioner was getting at in terms of misusing the tool, but um, if there's concerns about misinterpreting data or something like that, um, there again is a, a pretty extensive frequently asked questions section on the website that helps with some of that understanding the percentile ranking, understanding values, things like that. The tutorial videos can help with that as well. And again, if you are using the tool and just not quite sure how to interpret something or not quite sure what you're navigating, um, please reach out so that we can help make sure that you're understanding the information that's provided within the tool. Okay, great. So we have a question about the health improvement index and if um, with the existence of the HPI, if the health improvement in index will still be available and a tool that people can use. Yeah, so some of you may be aware of a tool that the Department of Health um, created a few years ago called the Health Improvement Index, and we are very pleased that the Health Improvement Index is one of the decision support layers within the Healthy Places Index. So you can access the Health Improvement Index on this map. You can look at it in using the compare tool. You can look at it in the different geographies. So we're very excited that that is a component of this map. It is um, they're meant to be companion tools. Uh, the HII, the Health Improvement Index, was just recently updated, and you can find that information on the DHHS website about the updated version of that tool. So this is not a replacement. This is a companion, and the HII is included in the decision support section. Okay, great. And I know this relates to a few questions that we've already had about training and how to use it, but in line with wanting to share this tool with partners or other um, community leaders, is there an opportunity for um, attendees here to request um, uh, to be able to share or present this tool outside of this venue today? So on the website, we will have the recording of this webinar. And so you're obviously welcome to share the recording of the webinar. Um, there's other tools and resources available that you can share. Um, yes, we would love for people to utilize the tool, to talk about it, to share it with partners, um, to get into it and try it out and explore it and use it in whatever way uh, is a supplement to the work that you're doing. Again, if it, there's questions or you need help navigating, um, go to the website, find the tools and resources, and then reach out. Reach out through the ohpp.utah.gov or the contact form so that we can be as helpful as possible to make sure that the tool is being utilized in the way that is most beneficial to you and the, and the work that you're doing. Okay, great. And so finally, we had a lot of questions just on specific indicators. Um, and so, um, is there a place where um, individuals can go to access a full list of the indicators, or would you just recommend going into the tool um, and viewing the HPI indicators and decision support indicators? Well, I would say go, first go into the tool. Yes, use the tool. Go explore, see the different HPI indicators um, in those eight policy action areas. Go into the decision support and explore there. We do have on the website under the tip sheets section, a PDF that lists all of the indicators. So if you just wanted to visually scroll through quickly and see what's there, we do have that as a PDF, but I would recommend go into the map and try it out. And as a supplement to that, for those of you who are interested in the specifics, both of index creation, indicator selection, um, how we created any and all of the indicators that are included in the HPI. We have also put together extensive technical documentation, um, including a 75 page exhaustive data dictionary um, that goes into detail about where all of our indicators came from and um, how they were constructed. 
So we can drop a link to the technical report in the chat and it'll be available through the HPI website shortly. All right, I think that covers a lot of our questions we had today. Um, we have documented these questions so we can follow up um, with folks individually who had really specific questions. Um, and otherwise, thank you for answering the Q&A and for participating in the Q&A. Thank you, Melanie, and, and thanks for all of the questions. And yes, we will document them and, and reach out individually if necessary for the specific questions. Um, and I believe I just saw the technical document, um, excuse me, put into the chat. So you can link to that document there. Um, so the next steps are, we are asking you to spend some time in the Utah HPI. So again, the you can access it through dhhs.utah.gov slash Utah HPI. We'll put it in the chat again, so you can just quickly link to it. Um, this website has a number of tools and resources, including tip sheets and extensive frequently asked questions. And as I mentioned, coming soon in the coming days, there'll be some tutorial videos that are there to make it easier for you to navigate the tool. Um, you can also find information about uh, how to contact us, including this email address, which is ohpp at utah.gov. So just take some time and explore and try it out and see how it works for you. Um, I just want to thank uh, at the end of our webinar today. Um, all those who participated. So thank you to Heather, to Helen, to Caitlin, Isa, and Angelo for your presentations today. Thank you to each of you for joining us and for asking such um, important questions and for taking the time to learn more about the Utah HPI. We look forward to hearing about how you use it um, and how it supports the work that you've, you're doing. And we look forward to our continued partnership with you. Thank you. <laughs>